Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next edition of, uh, well, it's live at the Global Icon. And we actually have an iconic guest today who is none other than the Heather Waters. Uh, Heather, thank you so much for coming um, on this, uh, this program. Uh, Heather, apart from being the founder curator of the Richmond International Film Festival, has also been a performing artist, an actor, and a producer. So she's been on technically both sides of the glass. So she can give us a great perspective on what it is to be on either side and also probably having empathy on the other side because I think both sides are relevant to making the entertainment uh, engine successful. You know, both need each other. So Heather, welcome and uh, congratulations on the upcoming edition of the Richmond International Film Festival. Thank you, Ashish. I'm, I'm very honored to be with you guys. No, it's great. And uh, this season, uh, we are really happy to, uh, to partner with you and, uh, you know, to bring value in any capacity that we can uh, during the festival. And we'll speak more about that as we go along. But let's start a little bit with uh, having been on both sides as a creator and being an active performer to now someone who's producing entities and programs can you give us a perspective from both sides and what one side can probably miss from the other side? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, as you said uh, it very well, I think we all need each other, right? And I, in particular, love being on both sides of the business. So part of me, you know, is a creative myself. So I have to kind of go into my cave and produce, direct or write you know, work on my own projects. The other half is all about business, you know, which includes a number of different things. Um, probably front and center is helping other creatives sort of, you know, help them catapult uh, their new projects or whatever they have, you know, lined up. And so I really enjoy both of those sides. And I, I think naturally over time, my career and my companies have kind of evolved into uh, creating platforms that allow me to do both things. So uh, let's speak a little bit about, you know, when you started the Creative World Awards, you know, the, the Media Industry Exchange, and then of course, culminating into the, uh, into the film festival. What is the value that you think that, uh, that you add, which maybe let's say somewhat distinct from other entities of, the, of similar nature? Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, it's about the technology. So we've seen so many changes in the industry, right, over the last de decade in particular, um, due to having these incredibly cool advancements in technology where we can do what we're doing right now, you know, via Zoom for this interview instead of having to be in front of each other. And so as technology developed, it really, you know, sparked... Um, an interest in me to create more platforms where I don't have to be in front of somebody personally to help their career, um, take their project and get it in front of people. I can actually do a lot of those things from around the world, right? And so, you know, with Creative World Awards that started out, you know, about the story, really finding a great story and helping writers um, connect them with filmmakers around the world, producers, studios, what have you. Uh, oftentimes there's kind of a disconnect and, and writers get, you know, the raw into the deal, I like to say, because, you know, they're the ones sitting at home in their cave, you know, writing their stories and they don't have a lot of opportunities to really get out into the industry and get their material in the right hand. So that's what we do at CWA. And then, Flash forward, you know, to the Richmond International Film Festival and the Media Industry Exchange, and we use technology now so that people can create together in a collaborative setting online, um, along with at the festival, sort of by curating a submission-based, you know, festival in our programming, both on the music and film side, we have people coming in from all over the world right here to Virginia, and we're able to put them on a, pl a platform and share their talent with the world. Um, and then we utilize, we go back to that, you know, technology to sort of rope everything in together. Can you share a little bit about uh, your perspective on 
let's say what the creators miss out on maybe the value that the executive side brings to the table and vice versa what may the executive side and the production side miss out with the talent's perspective yeah i think you know one of the things that i've seen through the years is you know we all can get kind of isolated within our own efforts initiatives businesses whatever we're working on artists are no different so when they create whether they're a performing artist uh, or a visual artist whatever it is um they are we're all kind of operating in our own little tornado so to speak and so with the industry it's the same way you know they are looking for that next great script uh or that next best artist that they want to sign, whatever it is. But it's very different, difficult to sort of come into each other's domains, you know, because we live, even though we're all connected through this great technology, we're still sort of polarized in different ways. And so I think it's a mindset shift that we've all been catching up to uh, in terms of, okay, how do we take these incredible advancements and work it towards our advantage? So that yes, we can still produce and um, you know uh, bring the best of the best artists to you know global audiences, but at the same time do it more efficiently using technology. And so that's what we're all about, you know, with, with each of the companies that I run. It's always trying to tap into that process. Neat. I think that's where I think we resonated because. In, uh, in a parallel realm is something like what we've been doing. Uh, and essentially that gave birth to the global icon, which essentially is in its simplicity, it's a discovery platform, which presents talent to the rest of the world. Yeah. The talent can be sampled in terms of, they can be explored and they can be presented, you know, to audiences who can discover lovely songwriters from, Indonesia, from to Vietnam, you know, to Trinidad, India, and uh, of course, you know, within the US, UK, and Europe. But uh, the idea is to bring to the forefront maybe voices which did not have uh, access and the means to really reach out to a global audience, which we can today. We have the tools and we have had them for some time, but I don't think they've really been stitched together to. It's like how uh, the virtual world has really been cashed on in the past year. Mm. You know? Yeah. And you know, one of the things with all of the companies, even CWA, which I had another company before that creative exchange, but CWA was really the big industry company that I started first. And one of the things that we wanted to do right out of the gate is to give fair access to everybody, whether you are a first time writer or uh, Emmy award winning writer. Everybody gets equal footing. So you got a great script. We're not going to play favorites. We're looking for a great script, right? So then we offer development to the, the newer writers. Um, but whether, you know, they need them or not, every script goes through certain stages of development, for example. But with Riff, we do the same kind of process, which goes to your point in the sense of the way that the world is now, and we do this, you know, at the festival, anybody that has a great film uh, or a band for that matter that's submitting to us on the music festival side, if it's good, they're going to get the same level of treatment as a Golden Globe winner, Grammy nominated, award winning, you know, a vocalist or band or filmmaker. And then when they come to the festival, Festival, where we bring all of these efforts together, there's no noses in the air. It's like it's a bunch of creatives doing what they love to do. So in, in your festival, um, how early can somebody send in their submissions, you know, for the movies and for the music to be considered? Well, we actually take submissions um it's all a little bit different um like creative world awards is open for submissions uh about nine months out of the year generally that runs from october every year until the next june um that's on the writing side and then on the film and music side we're open for about nine months out of the year as well 
This year's a little different because of the pandemic. We're planning two festivals at once, if you can believe that. <laughs> but so our 2021 festival is coming up September 7th through 12th. And, but we're already open for our submissions for 2022. Fantastic. Can you also speak about, uh, you have an education initiative that is, is associated with the festival. Can you speak about that? Maybe Absolutely. So we um, expanded, you know, to really sort of drill down a bit deeper on our educational stuff that we have been doing for many years at the festival. And it's also things that I, you know, do as a consultant. Um, and that includes development of artists, writers, whether it's film, music, um, and screenwriting. And or teaching business and entrepreneurial uh, skills and how to lock in, you know, via branding and marketing, things like that. Um, but we realized really soon that there was a great need for that kind of development. So what we ended up doing about three years ago was form the Riff Arts Institute. And so that we could really focus on that year round and not just during festival week with the flow collective creative conference panels and workshops that we do during the festival week. So now through the Institute, we not only help develop talent, but we also have like a promotional wing where, you know, we kind of lock in depending on where they are at what stage in their career. And then we also do things like artist and residency programs. We're working on music and film funds. Um, uh, so a lot of different things that eventually we want those artists to come through there. And then if they need our help, no matter where they are in their stage of their career, we can kind of lock in and, and help be the engine to help get them to, you know, where they want to go in terms of their career goals. So do you think there's still a void in the kind of training that is offered to ready talent for the entertainment business? Yeah, I mean, I think that you have, um, you've got the traditional means, right, through university educations and things like that. Now, you know, recently, the thing that's become very popular is online educations, right? Through master classes and things of that nature, which we kind of do those online series from time to time as well. Um, I really think, you know, each individual person needs to kind of look at themselves and, and what resonates with them. I'm a firm believer though. I try and spread out my own education, you know, uh, to a lot of different platforms um, I'm one of those people that if I'm not learning a few things every week, then I get grumpy. I really enjoy soaking in as much information as I can. So, um, and I'm self-taught. Sometimes I'll just get on Google and, and start researching and teach myself. But I think continued education is so important for every artist. And gone are the days where we can sort of get away with taking our career and pu putting it fully in the hands of one person. It takes, it really does take, you know, a team, a village, a tribe to pull off what needs to happen because there's so many different components these days to make it an artist's career, right? On the film side and the music side. And part of that comes down to the nature of the distribution channels having changed. So they're no longer, you know, traditional as they once were. So now we have to learn so much more, both on the business side and as an artist. I always coach people. I'm like, get out there and work. You gotta, you gotta be your agent, your manager, your promoter. Yes, you've got to link up with people strategically to help you do that. But it's great. It's a great thing to learn along the way yourself as well. So do you think that talent should do everything themselves or they should have a manager and agent as has been in the past? I think that it helps. I wouldn't spread out to have a large team. I think being very strategic about it is important, but I think um, it also comes down to having good chemistry with your team. Um, linking up with people, you know, on the promotion side, management, maybe an agent, you know, linking up with people to do things like 
you need a really great EPK. A press kit goes a long way. That first thing that you give uh, to any person or company that says what you are about as an artist, whether it be the graphics chosen, the words written on the page and your bio, how you put your press material together, um, how you say your quotes, but knowing how to craft that together is very, very important. It could be the difference in an artist getting 10 jobs in a month versus zero. It really makes a lot of the difference. And so if a person, the artist themselves does not have those kind of skill sets, they absolutely, you know, need a team to help them with that. And how important in these times is social media as let's say a tool to really promote yourself or uh, engage the services of a company or an agency that maybe does that? You know, I'm just going to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, social media drives me crazy, um, but it is so needed. So thankfully, I'm in a position where I, I'll get on and I'll like people's stuff and try and comment. And But thankfully, I don't have to be the one doing all of our social media and any of my companies because it drives me nuts. It is so crucial, though. I mean, and... The challenge with it is that the more and more uh, new platforms that are out there, the more the existing ones uh, develop too. They're always trying to come up with new things to do, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you know, and every everybody competing with each other, tying in. So you're you're constantly learning new and clever ways of how to get into that, you know trending sort of uh, storm where you can engage really authentically with your audience while also building it at the same time. So with the entities that you have set up, do you think you're a global player? And if you are, can you explain how? Yeah, I, I would definitely say we, we are a global player. Um, International is, is a theme that's run sort of through everything I've done for many, many years. And I think that that really comes down to, you know, as a young American back, you know, in my adolescence even, the more I would visit other countries, the more my mind would become open to different realities and much more complex and rich perspectives than just I had alone as this young American girl, you know, growing up in Nashville, Tennessee. So I knew early on that I wanted to do things in my future that enabled me to be a global player eventually, even as a young girl, to bring people together around the world. And so all of the businesses that I've started um, sort of lend themselves to some sort of international global component for sure. Any highlights you'd like to share uh, with your entities and maybe talent, people that you interface with, let's say on the film side and then on the music side? Yeah. Well, you know, just picking back up on that global component and also what you guys are doing, right, at the Global Icon, um, we, there's a lot of synergy there. And I'm excited, you know, for us to sort of link up and start this collaborative partnership that we're going to engage in. But we're kind of moving along the same path. And I think it's an important one. And that is again, pulling, you know, these artists together from around the world and also putting more power into the hands of artists. I love that. I, I love being able to equip and empower artists so that they don't have to become so dependent on these large corporations, but they can find their team, their strategic team and still get the same job done. And at Rift, for example, the film festival, 
you know, we're now, you know, up to like 160 films that we've accepted this year. And that's at like 20, you know, from 25 different countries all over the world from, you know, the U.S. to China to Dubai, you know, all kinds of, of places around the world will be represented right here in Richmond through the film festival side. Same thing on the music side, you know, um, I wouldn't say we have as many countries, though, um, represented on the music side. And I'd love to see that change. And that's one of the things I'm looking forward to, you know, as we sort of start to work together with you guys. Um, but we want that. And I think it's important because especially now more than ever in the world we live in, it's all about sharing ideas and perspectives and appreciating the different cultures. You know, there's so much, so many beautiful things about all kinds of different cultures. So we want to be on the front lines of bringing that on both the film and music side. Neat. So what about, can you tell us, uh, share something about Richmond and how uh, how you kind of fit in there and uh, yeah, with respect to the city, creativity in and around the city. Can you speak a little bit about that? We have, it's such a cool city. So it, it, Richmond is, you know, I grew up in Nashville, uh, the main places I've lived, LA, Atlanta, um, traveled a, a bunch, but I've only, you know, been in Richmond about 11 years, but I fell in love with the city because we've got this really cool arts vibe here. It's almost like an underground vibe, similar to Austin, you know, if people have been to Austin. Um, and incredibly talented musicians. Uh, film is up and coming as well. Lots of breweries, lots of foodie places, great restaurants to eat. Um, we've got a river running through the city, so you get a lot of tourists. And, you know, if you're shooting or, or filming, I think one of the things I love most about it is our brick and mortar companies, the production houses and post houses and um, sound uh, studios are so receptive and are incredible to work with. And so I would call us almost like we're becoming an incubator of talent, you know? So it, it's a cool place to visit and it's a cool place to come and, you know, check out, you know, as an artist as well. No, and uh, even from our side, both Bone Castle and of course the project, uh, the Global Icon, we're looking forward, uh, you know, to being a part of the festival. Definitely a chance to sample the talent that you've already selected. And, uh, and there's great talent everywhere. So, and from our conversations, we are really curious. And uh, because I think the platform is, is global, but the tools are not uh, as efficiently set up for an outreach. Though the distribution platforms are there, you know, you can, from the comfort of your home, actually put your music out and it's placed everywhere. But then how does it get discovered? So we are yes. really forward to participate in that with you and, uh, you know, really add value. Uh, that's what we've been excited with. And uh, that's what keeps us driving, you know, forward. So uh, I think that will be really cool. Aligning our resources and, you know, I, I like to call it strategic alignment, right? Like, and so we're so looking forward to that because I think, you know, the marrying our worlds together and having that network, it just enriches and allows for more sharing of resources and promotion. And, uh, and it's a win-win, of course, most of all for the artists that we work with. So that, that's really exciting to me. Oh, great. So really, uh, thanks for this. Uh, we thought we'll have a quick chat and, uh, you know, get to introduce you and the lovely initiative that you have uh, to, you know, further audiences and wider audiences across the world. And, uh, you know, wishing you all the very best with Riff and, you know, you'll have made scale to like super heights and <laughs> you your goals. Anything, uh, any parting thoughts, notes that you would like to uh, you know, present? I would just say, well, thank you, Ashish. Um, we are like thrilled um, also that you guys will be here in person for the festival and uh, with the songwriting workshops. And that's going to be incredible because we have people coming in from all over the world. And I expect great things to happen 
when all of us get in that room together, doing our thing, you know, creatively and just business wise. And then to everybody else out there, all the industry players, you know, and the artists, um, you know, I hope let's let's connect some way. I don't know if it's through websites or social media or through you, Ashish, but I look forward to getting to know some of your network and um, getting familiar with some of the talent you guys have on board too. Great. So looking forward. Thanks so much, Heather. And thank uh, you. We'll see you soon and all the very best. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.